Hey, this is Corey at My Wandering Wheels, and today I wanted to talk to you about preparing for travel in a wheelchair. So there's lots of things, but the first thing is to be paranoid. <laughs> be very paranoid. Make sure that you double and triple check everything. Don't assume accessible means what you think it means, or that it, they will take care of your particular needs or your wheelchair or your equipment. That is not necessarily true. So you have to kind of go into the entire process a little paranoid. Number two is make sure that your passports are up to date. Up to date means that they have to be good for three months after you arrive in the country. Not good just when you arrive in the country or just for your travel dates, but for three months after you've set foot in the country. So make sure that's true for everybody in your travel group. The other thing is that a lot of countries, including the UK, the EU, um, Japan, all want you to have some proof of disability. And those countries issue their own. But if you are an American, because of HEPA laws, you are not required to prove your disability. But we have some things. The first thing is an America the Beautiful access card. This is the easiest thing to carry, and it's pretty easy to get. Um, if you go to a national park at the gate, if you have a handicap placard, and you have the paperwork that goes with it that has your name on it, you can get one at the window to the, to the um, uh, park, but you can also get them online. It's a fairly easy application process if you are qualified. So this is, this is the easy to carry proof and I highly recommend getting one just on general principles. The less easy carry to carry proof is your placard. Um, you need to bring the paperwork with it because this doesn't have your name on it anywhere and they need to confirm your name with your passport. And there are other things like your disability card from the Veterans Affairs Office, um, documents issued by Veterans Affairs, Social Security Disability Insurance, Supplemental Security Income, your VA Disability Compensation Benefit um, paperwork, all of those are also uh, things you can use. But these, this and your parking badge are easiest. Um, the reason you need this is because there's a lot of discounts, there's a lot of um, special programs for disabled that you can only use if you have proof of disability. Being in a wheelchair is not enough proof of disability to necessarily get those. I am going to Paris and in Paris a lot of the museums are free if you are disabled um, and you have proof of disability. So things like the Louvre is free. You and one companion can go in free and our child is under 18, so she gets in free too. But you still need to get tickets ahead. So I'll talk more about that later. Okay, so those are the documents that you need to get ahead of time. But where are you going to go? Um, you might be surprised at some of the places that are actually accessible under the right circumstances. So my first international trip after um, being in the wheelchair was to Morocco. And I just typed in Morocco accessible travel into a search engine and I got both a accessible travel company and I also got um, a blog by Corey Lee that uh, described him taking his trip. And th this chair is my indoor slash backup chair, uh, but my, my big chair is Permobile. That's the one I need to be out in when I'm out for very long. And uh, he has a similar chair, but I can stand and transfer. He can't. So I knew that if whatever he could do, I could do it. And I signed up with the same travel agency. They made everything possible. They had a van driver who drove us all over Morocco, um, both you know from city to city and within cities, out to dinner, everything. Everything went really smoothly. Um, there was a couple of hitches, but they, you know, dealt with them pretty quickly and everything went fine and I had an amazing trip. 
So you never know where you can go. Now, there are some places like Thailand where it looks like the options are going to be things like a um, four-pulled uh, chair with a bicycle wheel and you have people carrying you around all day. I did that for one day at, at Ben Hadou in Morocco and it was good for a day trip, but it really wore me out and I would not have been able to do that day after day. So, you know, you think of what works for you travel-wise. Um, obviously, more modern cities are easier. Japan amazed me with their accessibility in Tokyo. There was, they were better at bathrooms than us in the US by miles. They had amazing bathrooms there. Um, they have like a push button and then the door slides. So that's fantastic. Um, I was very impressed with Japan. But uh, look at the blogs and video posts for the countries that you're going to and look for travel agencies. Now, um, one all over the world travel agency is called Wheel the World. They have um, a system where you can put in a profile and you can say what kind of chair you have and how much it weighs and what the measurements are and you know what you can do and not do. And then you think you're going to get a list of hotels and things when you do the search that match your profile. But no, this is not how it works. Um, unfortunately, uh, they'll you know you'll say i'm in a wheelchair no steps and then the hotel profile that you get will say one step and um yeah so you but at least it says where the steps are it says one step in into the hotel entrance or you know uh one step into the room or something like that it'll it'll give you details so it's best with them to book with an actual agent and go back and forth over email or on the phone. And they can talk with the hotel or the, the location you want to go to and uh, figure out the details of what will actually work for you. So that's what I did for Paris. Also, what I did for Paris is um, I looked up all the places in Paris I wanted to visit. So I looked up the Louvre and, you know, um, Saint-Chapelle and all the places I wanted to go, Moulin Rouge, and checked if they were wheelchair accessible. Now, most of them say this on their websites, but Moulin Rouge did not. So I emailed them and I found out they are in fact accessible to, to a degree. Um, and uh, they will... Uh, accommodate me when I get there but I needed to buy tickets first and then tell them my dates and everything and coordinate with them and then they would make it accessible for me so don't assume it's not accessible if it doesn't say anything on the website always ask that helps uh, also figure out how you're getting around in that place are there buses that take uh, wheelchairs are there cabs that take wheelchairs? Does the metro take wheelchairs? Um, do the longer distance trains take wheelchairs? These are all things to find out before you get a plane ticket. I want to add something about where you're staying. Um, think about not just like, does the hotel itself accommodate you, but what is nearby the hotel? What's the um, transportation like around the hotel? In Paris, we got a hotel that's right kind of in the center of all the things we want to see so that nothing is really more than half an hour walk slash roll from the hotel so that we can minimize um, taking transit and uh, getting cabs and things like that. So that is what we are um, doing for Paris. There's two day trips that we're going to take that take a train that are separate. But for the most part, we can probably get there on our own power. That's something that you want to take into account when you're getting a hotel. So you've got your documents, you know where you're going, you know where you're going to stay, you know what you're going to see. Uh, where? What about your flights? So I recommend getting a flight with an airline that lets you pick your seats because you want to be near the door um, and or bathroom, depending on if you're able to use the bathroom on the plane. And uh, 
if you're in an airplane that or if you're in, with an airline that does not let you choose your seats, that's gonna be a lot harder. So get, pick an airline that lets you choose your seats and then call their disability line and see if you can get a um, premium seat towards the front uh, without um, having to pay extra for it because a lot of times they will do that for disability. So it's worth, it's worth ca calling the disability line when you're booking your tickets. The other thing to do when you're booking your tickets is to get the most direct flights you can with the biggest planes that you can. Little planes kill wheelchairs. On the big planes, they have a big like ramp and they load it up um, in a sort of a box on the ramp and then they take it up and then they can keep it upright and wheel it in and it's fine. On the little planes, the baggage handler guys have told me that what they have to do is get like four guys, lift up the wheelchair, turn it on its side, and then shove it into the hold on its side. That is how they break them. Um, or they drop it or, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's people just lifting up the chair and moving it. That's just um, looking for trouble. So I would probably consider driving up to two hours to get to a bigger airport to avoid that. Uh, so yeah, you want to big, book a big plane. If you are like me and you cannot sit upright for more than two hours, then lie down seats are your only option for long flights. And that means that the disability tax is paying like twice as much or more for a seat. And I can't avoid that. Otherwise I just couldn't take the flight and I'd have to take like a boat or a train or something. So for me, that's just part of the cost of flying. I need a lie down seat. Because I need a lie down seat, I need to go into the seat map and check that there are lie down seats uh, and only select a flight that has that seat map with those, those seats. I then have to keep checking back to make sure that they don't change the flight to a, or change the plane uh, to one that doesn't have lie down seats. And if they do, I have to call them and change the flight. So those are some of the things I have to deal with. Um, you also need to call the disability desk to make sure that they know what kind of chair you're using, uh, what kind of batteries are, be ready to tell them what kind of batteries. If they are lithium batteries, they will want you to remove them for the flight and keep them in the cabin with you. Uh, what they want is dry cell. Um, so the dry cell can go in the, in the hold um, that's what my Permobile has. This one has lithium batteries. Those come out. They need to know the weight of the chair, the dimensions of the chair, all that. So have that ready. And um, you will have to tell them that either over the phone or in a form online. Uh, sometimes they have a form you can print out and attach to your chair or bring with you to the airport. In your forms, if you say you cannot walk at all, they will want to provide you with an aisle chair. And an aisle chair, uh, they basically strap you onto this little seat that's like, a, like this, that's about like this wide. And you are strapped down, you can't move, and they lift you up and uh, put you through the plane on this thing. And it's a little scary. I've done it once, I never want to do it again. But I have a choice. I can use a cane to walk short distances. Um, but uh, if you need an aisle chair, you need to let them know ahead. And that means they will also have one on the plane for you in, in case you need to go to the bathroom if you were able to um, transfer into the bathroom, which you know is another whole process. Uh, I will link a video for that. And you also want to fill out what kinds of assistance you need at the airport. Um, so all that should be on the disability line for the airline that you're flying with. Uh, I fly with United. They are of the big airlines second best in terms of not breaking chairs. Delta is the best in terms of not breaking chairs, uh, at least right now. But um, that said, I have gotten my chair broken six times. Uh, one time was a major break and the other five times were very minor breaks, and some of them were honestly my fault. I didn't prepare the chair the way I should have, 
but those were all on small planes. So that is something to consider. I have never had it broken on a big flight. Next thing to do is check over your wheelchair for any issues. Um, you might want to get it serviced, but if it's been serviced more recently, just kind of go over it and look for loose screws or anything that, that um, might come loose. If there's parts that regularly break, like on my Permobile, the um, little adjuster handles for the headrest break a lot, bring extra of those. Um, you want your wheelchair in the best shape when you travel. The other thing is, if it is a power chair, you want to check your converter. Um, or check your, yeah, uh, check your, your power supply. Because some power supplies convert voltage and some don't. And you want to call the manufacturer, find out if your power supply converts uh, to whatever it needs to convert to. You know, look up the country, see what the voltage is, um, see what everything is, call the manufacturer of your, of your wheelchair and your uh, power supply and make sure that it will work. So for my Permobile, um, that, the, the uh, charger I have uh, converts voltage, so all I need is a little teeny plug adapter for that and it will be fine in France. It was fine in Morocco, it will be fine in France. Uh, for this guy, I don't actually know. I haven't traveled internationally with this one. I probably won't, but if I did, I would need to do that process. The other thing I do is, besides the form that the airline has me print out, I do a separate form uh, for the chair that has instructions and pleas to the handlers uh, like this. So this is for the chair I'm sitting in. Um, it has you know, some instructions like this is where the brakes are, uh, don't touch this, this is how you collapse it. Um, my phone number is behind my finger here uh, if there's a problem. So I have that for this chair. And for my Permobile, I have a couple pages. This page that has instructions on it and a, this chair gives me my life back, please treat it well. Um, and my phone number again at the bottom. And I have, because they can't seem to find the breaker switch, I have a picture of where the breaker switch is. And if the joystick gets locked, it has instructions for how to unlock the joystick. And I have these in French as well, because I'm going to France and uh, I want the French baggage handlers to um, be able to read this as well. So, you know, have, have whatever instructions uh, you need for your wheelchair, print it out, try to make it simple, but include pictures where you need to. Uh, make sure that you have those attached to your chair, which is the next thing, bring some packing tape. I use packing tape to hold those signs onto my chair, but I also use it to, um, in the Permobile, the uh, footrests like flip up. And so I flip them up and I tape the footrests in place so that those don't get bonked during flight. Um, I take everything off my chair um, and I have the controller kind of like does this with the, with, if this is the arm of the wheelchair, the controller's like this, it can go like this and get tucked in. So I have the packing tape to tape it in place there so that they don't move it out in front where it will get bonked. Um, this controller on this chair um, just unplugs and I can, I can just take this one off and take it with me. Which brings me to have a duffel bag that you can put all the parts that you take your wheel, off your wheelchair into. Um, things that you might want to take off include the controller if it is removable, the headrest, your cushion. Your cushion you might want to bring with you on the flight to sit on, uh, but you definitely don't want to leave it with the wheelchair where it can fall off and get lost. So do not leave it with the wheelchair. 
Um, if you have any bags and things that you keep attached to the wheelchair, you can take those bags off and put them in the bigger duffel bag. So you need to bring a bigger duffel bag for all that stuff. They cannot charge you extra for it. Uh, it is medical equipment. It is accessibility equipment. You are entitled to bring that in addition to your carry-on bags. So those go on the plane with you in carry-on. If they try to take it away from you, say, no, this is medical equipment. It stays with me. So another thing that isn't something I need to worry about, but I know a lot of people do. So I'm going to mention it and then try to find some other resources for you. I will try to put some links in um, down below for this, but figure out your toileting needs for the airplane. If you can't easily transfer into a uh, airplane toilet, you may need to figure out alternate toileting methods and I will link some resources for that. As I'm not your girl, I don't know about that. Things that you want to bring with you in your carry-on are your medicine. All your medicine, um, anything you need to, uh, to protect you on the flight. Like for me, that involves um, headphones, earplugs, AirPods, all the things to protect me from sensory overload. Um, also bring anything that you might need uh, the first couple days if your luggage gets lost. So I always need sunglasses, I always need a hat, I need to have those with me in my carry-on. Uh, obviously toiletries, um, if you have toileting equipment you take that, um, and then you know just a change of clothes in case your luggage doesn't make it. So those are the things that I do to prepare for a trip. And if this video helped you, please like it. Um, that will help it get to more people who it can also help. Because that is why I do this channel, um, to help more people uh, get outside and travel and do things in their wheelchair, get out of bed, get out of the house. Um, also, if you have your own uh, tips for traveling with a wheelchair, please put them in the comments. Or if you have questions about things that I didn't cover in the video and you'd like to ask them, um, just put those in the comments too. And if you want to see more videos uh, where I talk about where I'm traveling or preparing the chair for travel or living with a wheelchair, lighting your wheelchair, costuming your wheelchair, all those things I will be covering and you can subscribe and find out. Thank you for joining me.